just have to open up yourself for change, and that is the beginning of change. Of course, they say family is the smallest unit of the society. So if it starts from your family, then we can get it right out there in the society. Please put your hands together for yourself as we call on the next person for the goodwill message. She is Ajia Maryam Nasiru Usman. Sorry, there's, sorry, there's a mix-up here. I'm so sorry, please. She is Ajia Aisha Moore, President, Reverse Supreme Council. Please, can we put our hands together for her? Thank you very much, ma. You're very much welcome. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my Muslim sisters. Shalom to my Christian sisters here. And greetings to you, sir. Thank you so much, sir. You're welcome, sir. Thank you for initiating this program. And thank you for inviting the Muslims to partake, too. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Mothers, we've heard all. We've heard all. We are supposed to work according to what we are, we've, we've heard this evening for a change, positive change. Mothers, they say, charity begins at home. Train up your child with the fear of God so they will not depart from it. Your morals to your children builds up a better nation. To all mothers and caregivers, God bless and guide Patience and dedication are the foundation upon which a bright and prosperous future is built. So work on them, please. May your effort be rewarded with good children that will grow up to be wise, compassionate, and successful individual who makes a positive impact in the world. Thank you and God bless. Thank you very much, Ajia. We're going to call on our very own sister. I don't know the love I have for this woman. I just told her, as she's going, she should go home with me. I'm ready to be one of her daughters. All right, at this juncture, please, let's make welcome Ajia Maryam Nasiru Usman. She is the president, Islamic Sisters Association, and SA Islamic Affairs, so... Mayor. Ma, please, you're welcome. Good evening. Good evening. I'm very grateful to miss, be with you people. I'm very, very um, decent. I'm very, you know, I cannot, I cannot say how I feel to be, to see you. I always see you on television, but this is a privilege to see you one-on-one. -on -one. May God reward you for what you have been doing for the masses. May God reward you. Mommy, daddy cannot do anything without your support. We really appreciate what you've been doing. May God continue to bless and reward you. I'm very happy today. I cannot express it. First of all, is there anybody here that is not created by God? My sisters here, are you not created by God? We have, um, we have different ways of calling God. We have Allah, as the Muslims express their own God, Allah. Then we have the Christians called God. So please, I would like us to sing a song. You can call God in any way you feel, but we will call it Allah. We call our God Allah. So call your own God, whatever, but God is God. God is one everywhere. So unto thy Lord be thy glory, great thing he has done. Unto my God be thy glory, great thing he has done. Unto Allah, unto Allah, oh, great thing he has done. Unto Allah be thy glory, great in the earth.
presentation here this evening is about unity. Let us, as our star has given us all this privilege to speak about, to speak one on one, to be with the Christians. We organized this thing last time, but it's for students. For the Muslim students and Christian students to interact together, to know that they are created by Abraham, they are created by God and children of Abraham. If God wants everybody to be Christian, He can do it. If God wants everybody to be Muslim, He can do it. He knows why He made us Christians and Muslims in every community, in every state and country. So we cannot, we cannot now start discriminating against ourselves. Please let us show love in our communities. Don't say this person is a Muslim, this person is a Christian, this person is a Kafir, this person is that. We are all created, we are all children of Abraham, created by God. Our daddy has joined us together today. When you see your neighbor in the house. <laughs> uh, no, I've not finished two seconds. You've not reached two minutes now. <laughs> Please, let us talk about love to our uh, neighbors. Let us talk about unity and peace to our neighbors. Let us show support, kindness, the little way we can to our neighbors on the road. Even if somebody is surrounded, Muslim or Christian, show your support, show your care, carry everybody along. We are there as unity. We, the country will be better. The Nigeria will be better. We let, let the change start in our house, in our neighborhood, so that even when we blame the government, we know we are doing our best. May Almighty Allah see us through. Thank you, Daddy, for everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. If this is the only message you take home, I think it's okay for the night. The Bible said, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in... Thank you very much. We're going to call on Pastor Mrs. Alaliba Dagogo Jack. She is the woman leader, Christian... Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, River State Chapter. Please put your hands together for her as she steps forward for her goodwill message. Thank you very much, Ma. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're welcome, Ma. I want to use this opportunity to appreciate our daddy for this Change Initiative Conference. Father, uh, daddy, you don't know what you have done. You have done so much for the women, for the society at large. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. God bless, God bless you, mommy. Women, oh, yeah! Women, oh, yeah! You know, it is not an accident. It is not by accident for that day to uh, have started with the women like this. Because God in heaven knows that the onus is on us. It is on us. Everything that is happening around us, the burden is upon the women. Therefore, the change ought to start from us. We are the builders. We are the builders of our homes. We are the builders of our families. We are the builders of our husbands, our community, and the society at large. Therefore, we need to arise on our feet. Look around what is happening and begin to look forward for change. Let it start from us. When I was growing up, my grandmother, my mother, when you offend them in the house... They will tell you, your teacher will hear this. And immediately we comport ourselves. But today, mothers, what are we doing? If teachers scold our children, we go to the school and in fact we fought with teachers. How can our children change? When God gave you a male child, within you, you, uh, you maybe you have the thought of having a female child. You begin to braid the hair of that male child. Introducing homosexuality into the spirit of that child. Spiritually, you may not know. That male child will grow up and begin to see where his mother braided his hair. And begin to think that, ah, I was supposed to be a female child. That was why my mother braided my hair. 
From there, that child will begin to, that male child will begin to wear female clothes, begin to braid his hair. Now it has become a norm. Our male children wearing earrings and all that, we taught them. Mothers, we taught them. We need to change for a better society. I want to thank our daddy once again for this change initiative. We no longer teach our children morals. When you give a child something, that child cannot tell you thank you. Because that child is not taught. No thank you, no good morning. A, a child will be seated on the chair, an elder will be standing. Sometimes if you ask that child, please, can I sit down? The mother will even ask you, if that child stood up for, for you, where will he sit? The things we are teaching our children, they are not norms. They are not normal. Women, let's look back and ask God for mercy. We have failed God. We have failed God. Because the, the, the women will stay small with the children. Our husbands will go out to look for money for the upkeep of the family. We stay with the children. What are you teaching your children? The society is corrupt. God will deliver us in Jesus' name. Thank you very much, Ma. We appreciate those kind words. We understand that when we embrace change, we can harness its power to transform and improve ourselves. And I know that's why we're gathered here today, because we're longing, we're willing to improve ourselves. And I know that when we get back home, that change we want to see will begin to manifest in our families, and it will transcend into society. At this point, permit me to charge up the atmosphere again as I bring on stage a woman whose song transcends all boundaries, a woman whose song resonates from across the globe. I'm talking about our own Choma Jesus. Ladies, Let's celebrate her again as she takes the stage. Your name is Yahweh.
salvation he will give you tonight will be so kind. Somebody jump and shout original God. Original God. Somebody turn around and hail him original God. Whatever you do, whatever you have. 
Mommy Choma Jesus, we can't have enough of her. Let's celebrate her. Please, one more time, celebrate her. Celebrate the grace of God. Celebrate her. Thank you. Thank you. You know we're not done. We still have a speaker that will be speaking to us, sharing stories, strategies, and of course, initiatives on how we can drive and bring about positive change. She's already standing by our side. So I leave my colleague here to please read up proof. Thank you. Barista, Mrs. Ibiwari Charity Club in Ogolo, LLM ONS, University of Joss, 1988, BL, Nigerian Law School, 1990, PGD, RSUST, now River State University, 1998, LLM, RSUST, 1999, and alumni of the University of London, School of Advanced Legal Studies, 2017. As a director in the Department of Planning, Research and Statistics, had the responsibility of, one, research and review of existing laws of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, especially as consigns river states. Two, identifying and advising on relevant issues in disputes between and for river state governments, MDAs, parastatals, boards, and so on. Advising on legal, human resource, governmental, and communal disputes. As acting head of Department of Legal Drafting, in preparation of the state fiscal law regime, headed the team on a week study tour to Lagos Ministries of Justice and Finance. Also lead the team of three law officers for a one month intensive legal drafting course in the University of London. As permanent secretary, special duties, July, 2017 to 2019, provides the distribution of relief materials to flood victims to the satisfaction of the victims. Effectively manage the onslaught of fire incidents at minimal loss to the public. Presently, he is the permanent secretary, information and communication with one year prayer to God one year prayer to serve God and the government. A wife and grateful mother of two children. She is presently the Solicitor General and Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Justice. Ladies and gentlemen, I present before you a woman who has vowed to serve God all the days of her life. 
Before you standing is Barrister Mrs. Ibiwari Charity Clapton Ogolo. Ma, Thank you welcome. very much, Ma. Thank you very much. We're glad and humble to have you. Good evening. God bless you, sir, for this privilege to bring somebody like me from a humble background, an administrator, a technocrat, somebody who does not really deserve to be here. But you honored me. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Ma Kumuyi. I've never met you before. I have seen him before, but this is my first time of seeing you for this honor. Thank you, the district. I'm used to district pretender, but I think district overseer of River State. Deeper life. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Ma. I thank you, the organizers who decided to pick a, com a complete civil servant right from Youth Corps till today to come and face this wonderful audience. I greet you, members of the press here present. I greet you, ladies, and the few gentlemen that have honored us to be here. Thank you. I am truly honored to be here at this inaugural Global Women's Conference of the Change Makers. Today, we'll delve into a topic, although I'm not going to be very verbose about it because a lot of what I've needed to say has been said. And I'm not, I'm one of those lawyers that do not repeat what other people have said. So, I'm going to look at the importance of 21st century skills for women. This is a rapidly evolving world, filled with both challenges and opportunities. I'm not going to use the word trials, temptations, problems, no. I want us to look at everything as challenges and opportunities. It is essential that we equip ourselves with the skills needed to drive meaningful and impactful change in our lives and in our environment. This 21st century calls for innovation. Innovation is another word for originality. Creativity, collaboration, and resilience. You just have to walk the walk. You don't just talk the talk, you walk the walk. Qualities that women inherently possesses and continue to demonstrate in all aspects of our life. Women are emerging as key agents of change, leading their families and communities into a future brimming with possibilities. My big sister, Ankio, had taken time to give us a genealogy of the development and impact of women in society, both within and outside the country. So I'm not going to that. To navigate this complex terrain, women must arm themselves with a robust set of skills that empower them to redefine family dynamics because change is imperative. Change keeps happening. Foster healthier relationships and contribute meaningfully to societal progress. We all know that this is the, year, this is the era of ICT, information technology. Digital literacy is now a cornerstone skill that we must all acquire. We all own handsets. Let's start from there. We all own handsets. We all have children, words living with us. Like somebody, one of the speakers here, one of the Goodwin messengers said, these children know this technology more than us. So when you finish with that trade, with that, your business for the day, find time to sit with them and let them coach you on that which you even need to work with because we must use these digital skills. It's imperative for us to make a headway in our businesses, in our families. Thank you. I've been told to um, reduce what I'm saying. So I'm doing this so that I just get you the points. Personal development is one area that I will not be min uh, minimal in my words. We need to develop ourselves as persons. We must develop ourselves. One of the most crucial skills, 
skill set for women in this 21st century is personal development. Understanding and managing our emotions. We women are very emotional people. That's why maybe that's why when Jesus wept, it had to be recorded because he's a man. I didn't see where they said any woman wept in the Bible. Maybe because we're always weeping. We know how to be emotional. Thank you. <laughs> so, what I'm referring to here is a management of our emotion, emotions. A woman is uh, made in such a way that her emotions drives her. Her emotions dictates 90% of who she is and what she wants to do. So, we must learn how to manage our emotions. Emotional intelligence enables women to build empathy. Somebody has said this before. And foster strong relationships within their families. Creating a nurturing environment where each member can thrive. In a world ever overflowing with information, the ability to analyze, solve problems, and make informed decisions is invaluable. Effective communication, both verbal and nonverbal, allows women to express themselves clearly, resolve conflicts peacefully, and strengthen the bonds that bond hold families together. Additionally, the power of creativity, the ability to think outside the bus, adapt to change, and generate innovative original ideas can breathe life into any family or community. I have to break down here. All this grammar I've just spoken can just broke into two things. One is your attitude. What is your attitude like? Your emotions drive your attitude. What's your attitude like? You have a, a, a half glass of water. I want us to leave this place remembering these two things. You have a half glass of water. You can say this glass of water is half full, or you can say it's half empty. If you say it's half empty, it shows that this is your mindset. It's a negative mindset. It's not the right attitude. If you say it's half full, it means that you, you have seen the possibility of filling that cup. So we must change our attitude. We must also change our, that is, we have to be more positive in our ways of doing this. Don't think that your challenge is bigger than any other person's challenge. You're seeing a woman here that is blessed of God. I did 10 years of marriage without any mis miscarriage, without being pregnant for one day. My oldest child is turned 19 in this August, and I'm close to 60. So that will tell you, and I married well enough in time, by God's grace. So if you think you have a challenge, some other people, you have problems, some other person has it. But it's your attitude, which of course is, can, be, can, can be positive if you walk on your feet. But of course, my faith is Christianity. So I walked on my own, and God saw me through. After my daughter, who is just 19, I have a son who is 11. So you can see the gap. You can see the challenge. So challenges are not, are not exclusive to anybody. My challenge and yours may not be the same. But if you have this attitude that it is a challenge, it is not the end of the road. It's not, it's not an insurmountable problem. You will actually get through if you stand on the word of God, which I know. I can only say what I know. And it's what I know I'm giving you. Thank you. So that is one side of it. I'm a woman that by last year, around August last year, to be exact, August 19th, because I was given permission to give stories. So I'm giving you my stories. <laughs> around August 19th, it was a Saturday. I sent one of the girls I'm fostering to go to the bank and get me 40,000 naira. By the time she came back, I had lost more than one million naira. They, I don't know what they did in the bank. And of course, police didn't help matters. And EFCC have not done much about it. But you see, there were some things I used to do in the house of God. Small, small things I was doing with my salary. Small, small things. And that was like a challenge. And I was like, God, I pay my tithes. I do my first fruits. How did I come to, how did I get to face this? But the Lord helped me. And he will help you if you decide to look at him. He helped me. I still met up with my financial responsibilities in the house of God. Down to the little, the ten cobble. Tight everything. I did, them, I did them all. And by December 14th, I was lying in my office in the Ministry of Information. And I was called and appointed 
Solicitor General of River States. So you see, this is the faith I know. This is the faith I give you. This is my story. This is the attitude I'm asking you to, to take on. You can't be a bitter person. The attitude, you can't be a bitter person. You can be an unforgiving person. You must, you must move on. And then there's another thing about this attitude too. How do you treat people in your environment? How do you treat people in your, house, in your houses? How, can people just walk into your house and tell the difference between you, between your children and your house helps? I like being practical. Can people walk, walk, walk into your house and not tell the difference between house helps and your biological children? It's a question you have to take home. Because the change, as we've all been reminded today, has to start with you. And it has to start with your attitude. It has to start with our attitude. You must learn to be kind. Empathy. It's not just empathy to your children. You understand when they fail. You understand when they do wrong. No. It's empathy to even people in the office. Does it mean that you're, 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 you're overlooking mediocrity? No. You can ask somebody, why don't you come to work on time? Why do you leave the office early? You may find that the person has serious challenges. And you must go out of your way to try to help. You must try. At least, as much as lieth within you, you have to do it. Thank you. So I go to relationship and family skills. You have to work on your relationship in the family. Your in-laws, this change we are talking of, it has to start there. Yes, there are some people that, I have a brother in law that told me once that, eh, the same sisters and brothers in, the, in their sister's house, their married sister's house, will serve their brother-in-law. They will not think in their own brother's house, they will give the wife issues. These are practical things. Empathize and build good relationship. Show love. Love never fails. If somebody decides to abuse your love, God will settle him or her. But you, you will keep being elevated because that is how it should be. Leadership and advocacy. Leadership and advocacy are, equal, are equally crucial. Self-advocacy builds confidence and resilience. While community engagement and advocacy for women's rights and social justice empower women to effect change beyond their immediate families, get involved. Don't worry. I am one of those who advocate that women should get involved in politics. Get involved. I'm not a politician. I'm a complete administrator and technocrat. But I advise women to get involved. The Bible says, which is the one I know, it says that when the righteous rules, the people will rejoice. And so for me, I know that in the new heaven and in the new earth, there are no unrighteous. So by logic, simple logic, it means that the righteous that is to rule and people rejoice is on earth here in these times, in this era. So be there. Let's see the change. Let them say, let them, yes, it may not, it may not, it, you may not succeed immediately, but keep the standard. Keep the standard of Christ, which is the one I know. Keep it. And along the line, when they look for dependable people, I believe that a time will come when they will look for dependable people and they will find you. Economic empowerment. Finally, in a world where economic empowerment is essential for independence, possessing entrepreneurial and economic skills is vital. Women who achieve financial independence and cultivate entrepreneurial skills not only enhance their own lives, but also contribute to the economic stability of their families and communities. Let us ask ourselves, have you seen a woman who is able to buy a car and dash her husband being slapped by the husband? It's not possible. A woman 
who before the husband says, darling, how much do you have? I need to pay school fees. Uh, and he's running into two million. Dollars. And she says, darling, take 500,000. Do you think that man will embarrass her in public? It's not possible. So please, acquire, ec become economically empowered. Yes, you may say you're trading on small, small things. No, just be faithful. There are principles established in the Bible. There are principles. You cannot say the pastor is eating your tithes. I'm not of deeper life, so don't think I'm preaching for pastor. I'm telling you what, the word I have touched, I have walked with. You pay your tithes. You do goodwill. You don't walk away from a genuine need. You don't see somebody. Yes, you may, the person may meet you and say, look at your size or look at your suit and say, mommy, because when, the, when somebody wants money, they'll say, mommy, you hear mommy plenty. Mommy, uh, I need 50,000. You say, my dear, I can't afford 50,000. But what do you need it for? And they give you. And you not find that it's, it's, it's genuine need. You can give the person 5,000. It doesn't matter if the person's countenance does not show gratitude. What matters is that God has seen that you have done your best in that situation. That's what matters. Don't walk away from genuine need. Be kind. So don't ever think that you are the worst. That oh, you only have to always receive. You're always asking. No. Or somebody's supposed to give you to get to that level. No. It was... And that was a man that taught me something. He said, have I ever seen a hand that gives being under? And I experimented. I realized that when you want to give something, you go like this. Or you go like this. You are never going like this. So, please, part of your attitude is that you must learn to give. You cannot always be, always be receiving. Because the hand that gives stays on top. So you have to be on top. Thank you. Then, <laughs> if you don't have, there are some churches, go and walk in the house of God. Sometimes they, in ch some churches they pay. I don't know whether here they pay people to sweep. Some places they pay. Why can't you go and sweep? And tell God that I am sweeping your sanctuary. I am working for you directly now. Pay me. You say a workman is worthy of his wages. So you pay me. I'm working for you. And he will pay you. So please, don't be lazy. Don't hang around. Don't be beggarly. Then you have to create a supportive environment. Today, I'm going to give a call to action. I call every woman present to please unleash her full potential. Embrace her unique voice. We all have our unique voice. My voice does not sound like Madam Aunt Q. We all have our unique voice. And perspective. And you can see, I talk very differently from her. And take a bold and courageous step towards creating a better world for all. We have been told here about your attitude in your houses. We have been told about your attitude in your, in your working place, whether it's in the market, whether it's in the office. So it's not like, oh, it has to be in the Ministry of Justice only. No. It can be where you're selling that Sam. It can be where you're selling that Gary. Let us not shy away from challenging the status quo. Speaking truth to power. Speaking truth to power can start from your house. Speak the truth in your house. You will not find it difficult to speak truth outside if you're able to speak truth in your house. And standing up for justice and equity. In conclusion, I encourage every woman here today to embrace these 21st century skills. One of them has always been there. It's your attitude, your, which is the cup of water should be half full and not half empty. The other one is please develop yourself technologically, and in your business. Find out what you can use to improve that business you're doing. I wish everyone here an impactful conference filled with opportunities for personal and spiritual good. Thank you once more for the invi invitation. And I look forward to the conversations we're all having. God bless us all. Which is Thank you life. very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Barista Ibewari, Charity Clapton Ogulu. Uh, or someone there, she has, you know, given us a call to action.
We must continue to develop ourselves as women in your business, in your career, and in life in general. At this point, permit me again to bring on stage, this time, a woman, a great woman with a very powerful, powerful vocals, a woman whose song is so lifting, a woman whose lyrics is so inspiring. Please, ladies, let's celebrate again our own, our mother, Choma Jesus, as she lights up the arena again before we get on with the next. Keep celebrating her until she gets here. Thank you.
Somebody said take you to Celebrate her one more time. Celebrate her. Celebrate her mommy, Choma Jesus. 
Thank you, Ma. Thank you, Ma. At this point, this is the moment I've been waiting for. This is the moment we have been waiting for. And of course, it's a rare privilege and an honor. I'm not worthy to do this, but I've been, I've been given the opportunity to do this. So at this point, it is time for us to hear from our father, the change maker himself, the convener. Please, let's be upstanding as we celebrate him. We're celebrating the change maker himself, the convener of the change maker international <coughs> women, global women program. He is, of course, a great leader. He is our father, the visioner himself, an astute servant of God. He is the founder and the general superintendent, deeper life Christian life ministry. I'm talking about Daddy, Pastor, Dr. W. F. Kumuyi. Let's make some noise. Thank you very much. God bless you. Change Makers International. The Lord make you a real change maker. It begins with us who have learned from early childhood charity begins at home can we add change begins at home when i say home i mean your own inner house inner home where you breathe and see and think and plan and go to a place you've never been before. And so, as we begin tonight, we have already heard from real change makers themselves. And everything they have revealed, a first speaker, a second speaker, and the good will message speakers. Everything we get together. And now, what I'm going to do is to just summarize everything and give you principles to lay by. A change will happen to you from tonight. And then you yourself, you will be a change maker. I will be a change maker. Father in heaven, you are our God our creator we come to you with the understanding we come to you with the faith the confidence that you'll make an appropriate change of every one of us and then you will send us forth to be a change maker in our homes in our communities in our country and then by extension in the world as well. We well, thank you because we know you have answered and we will see the practical change in every one of our lives. In Jesus' name I pray. God bless you. You can sit down. As we talk about change, change means that we're moving from one level to another. And from one place where we have been, we are moving to another place. Please, you can sit down. Now, I'm reading a verse of scripture from the Proverbs in the Bible. Proverbs gives us the wisdom to live, the wisdom to move around and to make different impacts in different places, at different times, and in the nation we belong to. It says in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34, it says, righteousness exalteth a nation. That is, when the people are righteous, then we can plan very well, 
and we can do what we need to do. And we can also lift up ourselves, our families, our nation. So righteousness in every sector, righteousness in every department of life, righteousness in what, out what, in everything we do, it says that righteousness exalts a nation. Righteousness in the leadership. Righteousness in the subjects, in the people that have been led. When the normal people, common people, when we exhibit that righteousness, right standing, right action. In every place, in the marketplace, in the office, everywhere, and then righteousness on top with the leaders too. The righteousness combined together will exalt a nation, will move a nation forward, will bring relevant change, important change, desirable change in every nation. And then it says in the latter part, sin, corruption, evil is a reproach unto any nation, any country. What I'm going to do tonight is to start with two examples. Two women, one young, the other a little bit elderly. The change they made and the impact they had. I refer to them as a Miriam, and then a mother. If you know the story of the nation of Israel, they were a nation of slaves. How did they then turn around to become such a great nation? And how have they remained a great nation until today? You think of the economy, you think of technology, you think about every area of life in a nation. And Israel is an exalted nation. Who were the people, the foundational women that brought about Moses, the child, and raised that child? And that child became a change maker in that nation of Israel and lifted up, lifted them from slavery and led them to the high ground they call the promised land. The Miriam and the mother that became the change makers. The story you will find in Exodus chapter 2. I'll tell you the story. At the time, this child Moses was born. There was an edict. There was a law in Egypt where they were, where they were slaves, that every boy that was born will be killed. But every girl, daughter, will be preserved. Well, you understand that strategy. Egypt wanted to make that Israel swallowed up by Egypt, so that all the boys are gone, all the men are gone, and then they'll get married to the daughters that were preserved. How did God's plan for Israel as a nation became fulfilled that they were not swallowed up, is sparing one boy. And that boy, when he was born, they didn't even give any name. We'll say a nameless boy, a nameless young man. And yet, they preserved him only for three months. That's all they could do. And when women's strength failed, God will take over your life. And so... At the end of three months, all they could do was think of a strategy and think of a plan. You know, change makers are thinkers. If you are not thinking, 
you'll not do anything. You'll fold your hand and you'll say, that's what they said. All the male children will be destroyed, will be totally eradicated. But they took action. Change makers are action people. You, if you just listen to what you have heard today, and you don't go and make a change and do something that you'll be able to say, this is what I have done in the direction of change. And so the mother thought of what you do. She didn't want to see the child die. Or any of the people, they are mandated to kill those uh, babies to come and kill the baby. And so she made a kind of little boat and put the child inside. And the child was there by the riverside. But she used her intelligence. You know, change makers must be intelligent. We must know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it. And so she placed that child in a little boat by the, seaside, by the seaside. And it was where the daughter of Pharaoh the king will come and take a normal bath. That's how they did it at that time. But Miriam, the sister, stood by. And that Miriam that stood by was watching. Change makers are watchful people. You watch. Your action, your watch, your attitude. Attitude is everything. And she was quiet. Uh, sometimes we talk too fast, too often, too loud. And so we miss our target. But she stayed there until that uh, daughter of Pharaoh came. That's the story there. And when the daughter of Pharaoh came there. She saw the child and picked up that little boat and the child began to cry. Remember, three months old child. And quickly, Miriam came at the right time and asked her, can I go and get somebody for you to take care, to nurse the child for you? And she said, yes. And she Miriam went to the mother and connected the mother with the daughter of Pharaoh and took the child. And eventually, the mother nursed the child. And so, I'm talking to you about Miriam and the mother as change makers. I talk first of all about Miriam. The Miriam was a sister. Who is his sister? As single-minded shield. You know, if you are going to make a change, the first thing about you is you are single-minded. Single-minded. This is the change I want to make. I offer myself. And I'm going to be a change agent. And I'm single-minded. I'm focused on this. If you are not focused in life, you cannot be a change maker. If you don't know the history of the nation, and you know, without my positive practical action, nothing will be done. This Moses, who eventually became the change maker for the whole nation, would have been lost. So this sister was as single-minded as a shield. To protect. Do you have anything to protect in your personal life? Are you single-minded about that? Are you shielding from the enemy? Are you shielding from the people that will destroy and destabilize? Are you shielding this particular uh, commodity? A man, a boy, a girl, or the future change maker? So, if you are a sister, a sister like Miriam, the sister is single-minded as a shield. Now, as we look at Miriam, the next letter 
for his sister is I. Now you see Miriam, for her folded her hands. Miriam, for just have been praying. Prayer is good, but you must initiate something. It's just like why we are here today. We're initiating something that will bring a change in your life. A change in your family. A change in our nation. And so, Miriam, as a sister, S-I-I -I is intelligent initiator. Intelligent initiator. As the mother, as the daughter of Pharaoh, grabbed the baby. And the baby began to cry. Now, that baby needed milk. The mother's milk or a woman's milk. And the daughter of Pharaoh didn't have that kind of milk because she had not given birth to any child. And so, very thoughtful Miriam, as a sister, he had intelligent initiation. He initiated the fact, can I go and call a woman, a mother, that can take care of the child for you? Now, as you become a change maker. You must always think, what's in the in need for them? You're not thinking of yourself. You're not talking about yourself. You're not exalting yourself. You're not saying, what's, what's in need for me? There are people that go through life. All they're looking for is, what is in need for me? If you're going to be a change maker, you have to think, What's in need for her? What's in need for them? What's in need for my community? And so she said, can I go and call a woman that will take care of the child for you? For you. Say for me. When you pour out your life for other people, you become a change maker. When you think of other people, what can I do for them? What can I achieve for them? What can I contribute to their joy? So that Pharaoh's daughter will now say, I have a child. Now, in the, in the sister, yes, this is strategic supporter. Strategic supporter. Uh, you know how, how little girls were think. Uh, uh, at that time, Miriam, the sister, was just about 12, 12 years of age. And you, you think about teenagers, they're going somewhere, come and go with me, come and go with me, come and go with me. And that kind of uh, going with other people would have made the change flow. There are times you have to stand alone. There are times you have to stand out. There are times as a change maker, you have to solely, single-handedly, Handle what you need to handle. And that was her sister. And he was strategic. See where she was standing. And see that she came at the right time. We do things at the right time. And we speak at the right time. And young people like Miriam that would have spoken, she could even have been crying at that time because of her brother, junior brother, just in the boat there, I don't know what will happen. Here comes uh, Pharaoh's, uh, Pharaoh's daughter. I don't know what they will do to my brother. But this was a real model. And that's why we're learning from them that if you're going to be a change maker, it's not just exciting you here and pumping up your emotion and saying, yes, we're going to make a change. There are principles, and these are the principles I'm referring to. T here in the sister is thoughtful timer. Thoughtful timer. Thoughtful. We think before we leave. We think before we take action. We think before we speak. We think before we make our proposals. Are you making a proposal in this area? In our country, in this area, in the life of our country, I want to make a change. And I'm drawing up a proposal. 
I'm writing up something because I want to start an NGO in this area. You must be thoughtful. Timer. Now, your time, your plan. Your time, your desires. Your time, the time you bring the proposal. And how you bring the proposal, of course, you must know the history of that community. You must know the, the, the things that are challenges in that community. And you write your proposal in such a way you don't contradict, you don't turn upside down the things that are happening in that, in that city. Now you know, Miriam could have come thoughtlessly and could have said, that's my brother, it's your father, the king that said they should be killed. Okay, go and kill and eat. That will not save Moses, but because we're very thoughtful, what do they want? What does she want? Now she doesn't have any child, and every woman desires a child. And what can I tell her that will make her say yes to my proposal? That's a change maker. This sister was a thoughtful timer saying the right thing at the right time to the right person and for the right purpose. E, if she was emotionally exemplary, emotionally exemplary. You know, as I know, that um, women are more emotional in, the, in general than men. And at her age, she had to be crying. And when coming, you could have seen the effect of the crying in her eyeballs, on her face. But this was a controlled person. A person under good checks and balances. A person that was just looking for an opportunity. No insult of the nation. No insult of the father of this daughter and no insult of this daughter no curse there you are you're killing our sons and that's one of them you want to kill okay go ahead god will judge you nothing like that she catch her emotion under control can you think of that these are the changes we want to start with that you say I've been guilty of that. I carry my emotion on my nerves. Once I don't like something, everybody in the community will know. And now, in these days of the social media, we take our emotion, we don't like this, we don't like this, and we blow it up. And by the time you blow it up, and you are reporting yourself to the world, I'm emotionally about this, and... Everybody, anybody that sees such a thing like this has to be emotional. Then you caught your way to making the change you ought to make. This sister was emotionally exemplary. And then are a reliable restorer. Mommy, I'm going out. As you have put that boy, my younger brother, by the side of the sea, of the river. I'm going out. I'm trusting God that I will bring this, my brother, younger brother, back to you. I'll restore him to you. That's a change maker. All the people could have been planning how to do this and do this and do that. And the scene does not work. But this sister was a reliable restorer. As you look at people around you, you don't appreciate what they do. You don't appreciate the direction they are going. You don't appreciate the result of their actions. Okay, what do you want to do? You want to restore everything to normalcy. Be reliable and be focused and say, I'm going to be a change maker. If I can change 
the destiny of one baby. Then he might become a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, a teacher, a farmer, might become whatever. God has appointed for that child to be, but you will be a change making sister. One, single minded shield. Two, intelligent initiator. Three, strategic supporter. And four, thoughtful timer. Five, emotionally exemplary. And the last one, reliable restorer. It will happen. Now, if you see that you have not been like this, single-minded, focused, driving to one direction, determined, that's where you need a change. And God will help you tonight, your change will come. Intelligent. You know, sometimes we do things as if we didn't even go to school. We do things as if we didn't read any literature book. We do things as if we have not even heard of other people, inventors. We have not heard of the people that, you know, had thought about something new that nobody ever thought about. And we just go, we live today as we lived yesterday. And then tomorrow, we live tomorrow as we're living today. And if you always do the same thing every day, you'll never get to a different destination. It might be a simple thing, like one of our speakers mentioned, and, uh, you know, in the U.S., where the, there was segregation between the whites and the blacks. And uh, they didn't allow... Uh, the blood even sometimes to ride in the same bus. And when they did, if uh, a white person came in, the black will have to stand up. But this uh, time, the lady who eventually brought the um, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, to uh, see that this is something in, uh, to fight for. She was so just tired that she said she wasn't going to stand up. And that became, uh, you know, a problem in court. And the problem led them to their promised land. It's just a matter of saying, no, I won't stand up. I can't stand up. No, that little word might be the word that will speak. And you initiate action for change. But if you follow the status quo. It's always been like that. I remain like that. And everybody will be like that. How will the change happen? Then you have to be strategic. Strategic. A strategy is very important. If we, you know, you don't have any strategy, how do you go from here to there? Suppose a problem occurs. How do you go through that problem? and still get to your goal, there must be strategy. And of course, you are thoughtful. You are not thoughtless. You are not just, you know, doing what others do, living how others live, and emotion. You have to control your emotion. And if you can't do it yourself, the Lord will help you. I lost a good amen. There's something in uh, we call emotional intelligence. That's what we call IQ. IQ is intelligence quotient. EQ is emotional. Um, the quality of emotion we have, that's emotional quotient. That as we have the IQ, the aptitude, the brain, the sense by which we can learn our emotion is actually of more consequence than the intelligence we have. That's why, as we look at this, Miriam, the sister, the emotional um, quotient was very important and then reliable. The mother wouldn't have allowed Miriam to go out if she wasn't reliable. You must have done some things in the past that the people will rely on you that if you say now, I'm going to do this, you have the history. 
You have the background that you have always been reliable. And today, we'll each come to the Lord and all these qualities, it will develop in our lives in Jesus' name. Now, I said we're talking about Miriam, and then we talk about the mother, the mother. These, and here, you are either a sister or a mother. And this is what makes change in life. I can talk about many mothers in the Bible that prepared their nation for a change. Now, as I talk about mothers, Emma, I'm looking at the mother, the mother of Moses in particular now, as a, a methodical mentor, a methodical mentor. When you have a child, you understand, God gave me this child to take care of for him, for his purpose, for his good. And as you look at that child, you're always thinking, a gift from God, yes. First, a gift to you, the mother. A gift to the family, understand. A gift from God to the nation. Always look at the child like that. Are you a teacher? Always look at those pupils as gifts from God, and you are to train this child. Bring up this child for the future calling. Are you a doctor and this child is brought? You have to take care of the child. This child, don't just look at the present situation. You're looking at the future. This child, I'm going to do my best for this child to prepare the child for the future. Are you just a neighbor? And what you say, your impact, your words to your neighbor's children. I'm preparing this for the future of the nation. It makes you to see people in a different perspective. Makes you to see everyone around you, whether a relation or just a neighbor. You see them in another view. The mother then is a methodical mentor. You understand raising up a child in that community where there were slaves, where they never amounted to anything, where no slave ever became an engineer, a doctor, a pathfinder for the whole nation. Here was the mother. And what was she going to do? She was going to be a methodical mentor, not haphazard. You go from one to the other. You tell them the history of Israel and the origin of Israel from Abraham and the promise to Abraham and where we're supposed to be and the prophecy concerning our nation. It was the mother that did that, you understand? There wasn't any church at that time was Sunday school. There wasn't any school at that time where Moses was going and there wasn't any religious organization that would take up these little children, but the mother did it all methodically. Are you methodical yourself in the things you do, in the way you live? Are you methodical? Or are you haphazard? You throw this there, throw this there, and second day you are looking for that thing. Where did I put that thing? If you are methodical, you will know where you put A, where you put B, where you put the key, where you put all that thing, and where you put your money, and all your accounts. Everything will be so well done. Methodical mentor. And God or raise that up in your life in Jesus' name. Now, uh, the mother, O, oh, is objective optimist. Objective optimist. As a mother, the mother of Moses was kind of an optimist. Didn't think, well, here we are. I'm taking care of you now. And then I'll soon surrender you back 
to Pharaoh's daughter. What do I know will happen? And when you see, what do I know will happen? You'll not do everything you need to do with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Here is our situation. Here is the poverty. Here is the slavery. Even if I taught this child uh, the best I could, uh, what's going to be the outcome? He, she was optimistic. There are people who go through life negative. People who go through life, look at what